All right, listing queens, we are back with, um, I'm really excited to have this conversation with my friend, Chloe Powell, who is a top realtor, of course, um, but she's also uh, known for being a content strategist, content creator and a digital strategist. She is um, top notch, top, top drawer. I would say when I think about a CEO agent, I think of Chloe. So hello, Chloe. Hey, Jan. It's nice to finally sit down with you. I know. I'm excited. I thank you for being here because we want to pour into these women that want to be listing queens. So the topic, ladies, is the perfect client experience. And I want to share with you that I usually don't use the word perfect. So um, the reason that, that we're using that is because everything that we do is laid upon a foundation of what we get to deliver to our clients. And so for us, it's perfect because we create it. So Chloe, um, can you talk to us about the importance of brand as, a, as when you're creating your client experience? Can you, can you talk with us about that? Yeah, well, I think, you know, any business needs to stand out um, and they need to stand for something. And when I think of branding, um, I kind of have these brands in my head that have exceptional service and those could be like the Ritz Carlton, which is known for white glove service. I mean, there's always people who are like head to toe, black and white with the top hats. And that's what I imagine when you go to the Ritz Carlton, that people are opening doors for you. Like you never have to ask any questions because everything's already been thought of. And um, that's the Ritz Carlton brand. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're creating a business, you want to have some sort of idea of who you're going to be catering to, um, what that's going to look like, um, because ultimately those are the people that you want to attract. And if your brand is, you know, maybe less than, you know, maybe all over the place, right? Like maybe one day you decide that you want to do um, one thing and then another day you want to do another thing. Well, that's not really looking cohesive to everyone out in the world. And I truly believe like what you put out into the world is what you're going to attract back. Um, and that's, you know, what I love about branding. I love that. And so the branding goes through every little thing, the way you're presenting yourself right now, right? The way you present yourself online and the way you present yourself when you're in person, whether it be on a listing appointment or as you are networking, or quite frankly, even if your thing is playing tennis or hiking, you, you're always your brand, right? And yeah. so, and so um, you talk about familiarity, okay? And can you just talk about how that brand is really what mm -hmm. allows you to stand out and, and just expound on that a little bit? Yeah, I like to think of it kind of as your golden thread. So as you know, a lot of people, they see me on social media, they think that I only do social media, but really it's like encapsulating every single part of what you do. So, you know, if you're on social media, make sure that your, your feed looks kind of similar to your brand colors or that, you know, if you're doing luxury that you're not showing up in your sweats every day or something, right. You want to kind of have a cohesive cohesiveness to what you're putting out online, what you're putting out in person, what you're sending out in regards to print marketing, like your postcards, your everything. And it also goes through the whole process. Like, you know, who, what are you sending in terms of like your email follow-up or, um, you know, text follow-up, like what does that include? And all of those little things have to have the same similar, um, uh, similar branding. So, um, that it just makes you look a little bit more polished and not to say that, you know, it has to look beautiful because it doesn't have to look beautiful, but a brand could be simply like how you make people feel. Yeah. It doesn't exactly have to be beautiful because I do think that done is sometimes better than perfect, but that's also where the systems come in as well. Um, yeah. That's right. So now that you talk about systems, when you're thinking about like, like okay, so we have um, agents that will be, you know, starting out, making 50 to 75, making 150 to two, and then making five over a million. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's just talk about if, if I were really 
wanting to dig into creating my own client experience so that I can just shout from the mountaintops yeah. about my client experience. What are the systems? What, what do you recommend as a starting point? I think if you're a new agent or if you're starting from like ground zero, maybe you're moving to a new area, you really want to kind of put pen to paper. You want to map out um, who do you already see yourself as? Who do you enjoy working with? Or who do you see yourself enjoying working with? Like based on your past experience. Like for me, when I first started, I really loved new construction because I did a lot of new construction in my own personal life. Um, and also where I lived, it's kind of more luxury. There's the homes are at a higher price point. So I did want to cater to those people and you can, you can hear from me that I'm catering to them versus me. And I think a lot of the time people start to think, oh, well, my brand, it's, it's going to be about me and it has to be about me. And it has to be bold colors because I love bold colors. And it really doesn't have really anything to do with you. It's all about the other, like who you're representing, who you're working with and, um, how can you speak to them on a level that it's like, you're just speaking to them versus like the whole world at one time. Um, because you, in order to get someone to work with you, you, I think a lot of the time people want to speak at like a ton of different people at once. They're throwing spaghetti at the wall. They're figuring out what works. And it just won't work at all because it's like, you're not, you're not, you're not niching down enough. And I find that it's, you know, one of the things I learned from you, Jan, I think it was probably one of the first conversations we ever had in our coaching was creating your, um, like a, your ideal client, your persona, um, who you talk to. And so I, I still use the same person. Her name is Charlotte. Uh -huh, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, so I still do that. And so whenever I'm creating a video or whenever I'm creating like a new, um, like mastermind or product, or, you know, I want to uh, release something into the world, I think back at Charlotte and I'm like, would Charlotte like this? And, <laughs> you know, it's nice to have something in the back of your mind when you're thinking about, um, creating anything It's like, okay, well, this is an actual person that I can speak to that I can actually understand where they're coming from, what they're feeling. And it makes every single thing easier, like creating your videos. It makes it so much easier talking to someone called Charlotte than deciding to come up with ideas that maybe like the whole population of the planet in Loudoun County will, will like, right. um, because at the end of the day, people won't like you. There are going to be some people who do not like you and that's going to be okay. Yeah. That's, that's yes. who you, who you are branding for. Right. And it's okay to repel. And in fact, that's what we want. Right. Mm -hmm. So I love this ladies, your system. She said, put pen to paper because that's where it starts. We have, but we can't do that with all the noise. We have to turn off, throw the phone in the other room, get it <laughs> out of there. Okay. Turn off your dang computer, get an old fashioned notebook and a pen and just think, what do I want to give? How do I, if hopefully you bought or sold homes, what did I like about my realtor? What did I not? And of course, um, this is even applicable if you are making two, 250, 300 a year, but you're working your butt off, mm -hmm. you're burnt out, you have no systems, and you really don't even know what your client experience is because you're just putting out fires, okay? You're doing it the hard way, ladies. So let's just slow down. Let's just get a freaking piece of paper and be like, okay, who am I talking to? In, in Chloe's case, she's talking to Charlotte and she asks <laughs> how old Charlotte is, what Charlotte likes to do, right? And you get, a, and that way you're saying, okay, that's who I'm speaking to. That doesn't mean it's going to preclude you from helping Suzette and Georgie and this and that. It's just that that Charlotte profile person is going to love the client experience that you are developing. So what are some of the, um, aspects of a client experience. Like I would think gifts, I would think your email, or your communication sequences, um, mm -hmm. like talk to me about how do you, what do you think about starting from your messaging, which is your first client experience, mm -hmm. right? Your, how you show up online or in person, 
all the way through to forever? Like, like, what do you, what do you recommend or what, what's your thought process as you as you put together your client experience? Yeah. So I like to cater to all the senses, right? So I think, you know, when you're seeing online, uh, if you have a professional brand photo shoot, like what are you putting out into the world? Like what videos, what photos are you putting out? Um, and then, you know, <laughs> For example, at the consultation, I actually um, give them a candle that they're able to, I sell, I tell them light this and whenever, whenever you're stressed, because then you can take a deep breath and then you can like release all of the stress. And I want you to light it every time that you're stressed. And I love that. Yeah. And it's just nice. It's like reminding people to be intentional and like actually breathe and like, it's going to be okay. Yes. Like I'm holding their hand throughout the process. Yeah. Um, like they do not need to know everything about the process. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but we will get through it. Right. Um, and then, you know, I, I do also <laughs> do taste as well. So when they get like the accepted offer, I do some, sell, um, give them something that they can eat, like either crumble cookies or a spoonful of comfort um, just to kind of, you know, have that additional relief that we're already this step in the process. Like they've worked their butts off to get their house in like the best shape and ready to, um, and for selling and they have reaped a reward from it. Yes. And then, uh, when we, when we close, I just give them like a small gift. It's the same for everyone else. It's just a little goodie bag of like, there's like a chocolate bar. There's like a, a candle with some matches and, um, I think there's like some tea bags or something in there. And it's just, you know, people are moving. They don't, they don't need like something significant, like too significant, but it's just an extra touch. Yeah. And um, then afterwards, uh, depending on, usually if they're buying a home, I will send like a $50 Home Depot gift card um, because, and that's usually six weeks after. And then they get my um, month, it's a quarterly magazine, they um, get my email newsletter that's sent out monthly. Um, and I invite them to my events that I usually hold like at least twice a year. Awesome. So hopefully awesome. you get bigger probably, and bigger. <laughs> this is, um, when you think about, you said all the senses, I cater to all the senses, okay? Because it's your eyes with how pretty everything is and then your taste and your smell. That dopamine hits. Yeah. Now, as a former neuroscientist, did you know that you were offering them dopamine hits to keep them loving you throughout the process? Was that a conscious decision? Because that's what that's what it's saying to me. Yeah, I mean, I really wanted to give the best service possible because I had learned from all of these other companies about what they were doing and how they were retaining their employees, how they were retaining their um, like their top dollar accounts, and they're all doing this. Yeah, you know. I love it. Oh my gosh. Wait, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't want to interrupt. So, so it's like, you know, Facebook, Google, like uh, all of these fortune 50 companies are doing all of this for all of their employees and their top accounts. Like we, we earn a lot of commission in real estate. Like, why aren't we doing this for our, our, um, our clients? And we don't have to make it overly complicated, which I see everyone doing. We just have to keep it simple. Like it yes. needs to be as simple as like clicking a button. You know, like we do not need to go to home goods and create this like curated basket every time. Right. It's too complicated. I agree. I couldn't agree more. My clients fight me on it. And I'm like, you're causing your own hell. You mm -hmm. do not have to do that. Now you use a couple of companies and why, and if you wouldn't mind, can you just share what they are? Yeah. So for, um, so I use like a little artisan for my candles um, and it, wherever you live, you could literally reach out to any candle artisan, like go to your local farmer's market, shop local, because it, it kind of just makes it better if you're like shopping local. Um, and I just told mine, like, look, I want like 25 candles for like $500. Like, what can you do? And I do that whenever I run out and right. we created a custom scent for me. And we just have them in these like nice white boxes with black bows and yeah. And then for the crumble cookies, that's crumble, which if you don't have crumble, there's other cookie places are available. And I have ordered from them. 
Um, Baked by Melissa is another one I've used and they do these like really tiny cupcakes. Um, and these are all great because you can ship them. Uh, so if you have referrals who are out of town or they're out of state, then you can do that as well. Um, I've done spoonful of comfort before. Like I've had some uh, sales where like someone has died and I like did them this whole care. It was like a, you get these soups and it was like really nice. People were really ill and um, we sent them like chicken noodle soup, I think. Oh. Um, and then uh, I use Virginia Dare Dress Company and they are all about gifts. So I just go to them and I say, look, for my closing gifts, I want to stay around $50 per box. What can we put in them? Yep. And I think that's easier than having all of the gates open and say like, I want this and this right. and this. Right. And sometimes, you know, if it's like my second or third uh, deal with these people, I will, you know, go something a little bit more custom with them, but I just reach out to them and say like, look, can we just add like a cookbook to this or something? Okay. Um, it's nothing. I just have to send an email. Right. Simplicity yeah. sells and, and these little touches ladies at these milestones. Cause that's what um, Chloe was mentioning at different milestones makes you memorable. And because they're getting dopamine hits, it's actually proven. And I did a live on this and she's a CEO agent Facebook group um, that when you give some, when someone gives someone a dopamine hit, it puts a notch in their brain. You're remembered. Mm -hmm. So you want to be remembered, give people dopamine hits. That's why I was like, dang, how brilliant is this? And you also <laughs> said, um, you said simple and that you, uh, that you were talking about the uh, Ritz Carlton experience where you don't have to ask questions because they've laid it all out. And, yeah. and I always coach on, you know, setting the right expectations that what they can expect with you as their agent and that showing that proactivity level allows them to feel safe with you and they trust you. And then your conversion rate's going to go up. So I love that. Okay. Um, you, you talk a lot about well, I shouldn't say a lot, but I've, I've seen that you have on your website asset guide. I call them assets. Mm -hmm. You have them guides like um, Valentine's guide, buyer's guide, seller's guide, local events guides and things of that sort. I call them your business assets. Okay. So talk to me about how you use them. Are they lead gen sources? Like just talk to me because we hear about lead magnets and I didn't know how you use them and incorporated them into your client experience, or if it was just simply a lead gen or a combination? Yeah. So I do try and put them on social media as kind of like a marketing funnel. So for example, like um, this month in April, I will be doing the home organization guide. And that's for people who, you know, they're getting their home organized, but also they're probably potential sellers as well. Yeah. And for that one, it's nice because I want people who even aren't selling. This is kind of also like a referral maker, like providing people with things of value um, and seeing if they will download the guide. So on stories, I'll post it. And then I'll also weave it into my uh, feed, Instagram feed posts. And I'll talk about the guide. People will be able to enter their email and then they'll get a series of emails from me that are all automated. I've already set it up before. Um, but this one, we're partnering with like a local organization uh, team here and we're like offering coupons. And then I'm also doing a yard sale. So it's like that event of the month, it's all gonna be like very similar. So you know, it's kind of like a launch, a soft launch with the home organization guide, but then we have a yard sale for organization. And then we're having like a junk person come and like get all the stuff that you've <laughs> taken out of your house. That is so brilliant right? <laughs> because inside the CEO agent Academy, I teach how to have a monthly theme and just, it makes, it makes showing up so much easier. Right. Mm -hmm. So what you've done is you've thought ahead, spring cleaning, equals organization. What do people need? I guess they need a trash solution and they need, you know, the yard sale and see about a purge, you know, mm -hmm. and, and then you've partnered with a local. Is that what you said? You've partnered with a local like professional organizer yeah. and they're going to be in tandem with you. Um, and perhaps they're sending to their database, something about you. And it's a beautiful collaboration. And mm -hmm. that makes 
your client experience up leveled. So yeah. um, how did you how did you arrive at the um, because a lot of people want to know the how. OK, mm -hmm. so so I teach them that, um, you know, as you know, you were a, a client of mine, but you get to decide you get to trust yourself and decide. Right. Because you start out by saying, grab your pen and paper. And what do you want to do for your client? Who do you want to serve? Right. But it, it carries through. So how did you decide on finding is like, did you find the National Association of Professional Organizers and found out who was local or how did you um, come about this? I mean, it definitely morphs over time. Like in the beginning, I definitely did not know, you know, I just started, I did it. And then I figured out a way to do it. And I think a lot of this was me figuring out things like they weren't a hundred percent perfect, but over time I've gotten them better. And I think probably once a year, I will go back and I'll look at everything and say like, what can I do to improve this? But it's not all the time. Like I just recently put all of those assets on my website and it's something that's private. Like I'll send it to my clients and I'll say, look, this is the home buyer resource guide and all of the resources are on there as a flip book. So they're like all in one place for people oh, yeah. um, instead of, you know, just having the lead magnets. Uh, because, you know, you have to have things that go on top of each other. So once you've got one thing, master, then you can do another thing. And I think in this business, especially as, you know, all the top successful agents, they're doing the same thing over and over again, every year. Yeah. And it's like, it just builds and builds and builds on top of each other. Like we don't have to make it complicated. Once you have one thing that is like doing so well, you just have to keep it and do it again. And right. again. That's right. And in fact, even if it's not doing well, right? Mm -hmm. Because the first time we do anything, it's like the first time we hopped on a bike or behind the wheel of a car, how did that go? Right. <laughs> and so I love, gosh, ladies hear this. She's saying that she, she tries things and then she, she evaluates, right. And that is a high value action cycle where, where you're like, okay, I'm going to look for what worked first. Then I'm going to say, hmm, how could I improve this? And then you're going to repeat with delight. And then each time it's going to get better and better. And then you also said, master one thing, master one thing. And then once that's mastered, then, then move on. So when you talk about your client experience in your testimonials, what do people love and speak to the most? What do you think? I think a lot of them speak to the education um, part of it. And then the communication, um, I have a lot of templates set up that, you know, really give expectations for my clients at every part of the process. And I think that really makes everything go well because they already know what to do prior to it actually happening. And, um, they feel comforted by that because they already, they already, feel like I'm giving them information because I think the last thing that people want is to call you asking for things, which, right. you know, I mean, it's okay, but, uh, we want to look a little bit, probably more professional than that. Right. Because then they're the boss when they're constantly asking you questions, you're in a reactionary state, which means they're the leader and we want to be the leader. So I like that you said, and I missed it. You said education and communication. Communication, absolutely. So in your in your estimation, in your client experience that you have set up, let's just say for sellers, of course, because these are listing queen in the making here. Um, what is do you did you ever count up or do you know the number of communications once they say yes, you're my listing agent until uh, post-closing, like maybe one, the six week after closing, how many communications? Uh, there's about 85. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank so, you. And tell us about some of those. What are the buckets or, you know? So, I mean, obviously there's the pre-listing, yeah. right? So you have the pre-listing phone call and then, um, you qualify them to see if they're ready to sell their house. Then um, I send them an email that has all the things that are required for our appointment. And then um, I go on the appointment 
and then we uh, have the photos, we have the, all of that pre-listing stuff. Sending the thank you card, sending um, uh, any, you know, coordinating things that need to be done before the listing and then everything that's happening while we're listing. So just listed, um, following up every week to show them, you know, what's the marketing like, how many hits are we getting on Zillow, all of those good stuff. Um, I always think like, and whenever anything happens, you have to send a text, you have to have an email, you have to have a phone call. Yeah. And I like to have a phone call every Monday. And I already tell my clients like, look, I'm always going to call you on a Monday. Love it, can go to, it can go to voicemail, but they know that they're going to get an email from me on a Monday and they're going to get a phone call from me on a Monday. And, um, you know, if that doesn't happen, then they will probably call me. Right. Uh, but at least setting those expectations because people will wait. Sometimes they'll be like, okay, well, we know that you're not going to work on Sunday night. So we're just going to wait for your call on Monday. That's right. Which is great because you don't want to work on a Sunday. That's right. And Chloe, I have to say, you are declaring, this is how it works working with me. Yeah. My, um, my brother needed open heart surgery many years ago, and he saw three heart surgeons. And I love that he came back and said, yeah, each one told me what I can expect pre-op, in the op, and post-op. And I was like, bravo, right? Because that's, that's, I mean, that's, I love that. So you are a leader when you declare, this is what you can expect from me. This is how I make sure that communication with us is right on point. And of course, in between, you have my number. I love that. 85 ladies, 85. And so um, that is from actually the first prospective discussion with them and then, and then through to post-closing. And um, so what I, what I want to talk to you about, and then I guess, unfortunately our time is up. I could talk to you for hours, but um, I want to talk to you about events. So there's VIP events. I call them VIP, but customer appreciation. And then there are you showing up in town at another event that is already going on that you're not really the hostess of, but yet you're there. So can you talk to us about, you know, how do you come up with your VIP events? And then do you invite all of your clients to meet you when you go out and about to certain things like a winery or something? Yeah. So, um, we just had our Galentine's event. Um, it was kind of interesting because I did code do it with other agents from different brokerages. Um, but it was great. I mean, we were able to invite all, all of our clients. Uh, it wasn't weird or anything. And we brought um, different vendors who were local. They, uh, one of them had like a little boutique. Another one was my, um, my esthetician who does hydrofacials and Botox and everything. And it was nice because all the people were women. They were able to ask people about their, you know, do I need Botox or anything? Yeah. Yeah. And then we had people doing this like hair braiding and like putting these like little tassels in people's hair. Um, and then I bought a bunch of flowers and I thrifted a bunch of vases from the Salvation Army and people just uh, made their own flower bouquet. And that was quite a hit, I will say. I will do that again. Uh, that would be a great Mother's Day event as well. Yeah. Um, so that was one of my VIP events. Um, but showing up, uh, usually I try to like for the flower and garden show in Leesburg, I'm going to have a table. Um, it's like right outside of our office and, uh, I'm giving away these like little flower pods that people can just plant in the ground. And I'm raffling off two tickets to the Luckett's, um, uh, spring market. Oh, <laughs> so I love that come, I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> Uh, but it, you know, it's fun. Like that's, that's fun. People get to see me in person and it's great because I can just, I'm actually writing out all these letters right now. I'm inviting everyone to the flower and garden show. And I say like, look, come on Sunday because you can enter to win these two tickets to Luckett's. I love to see you there. Um, and it's just nice because then they can come to me. They don't, I don't, I don't have to schedule anything. Um, and so actually my gifting ladies, the Virginia dare dress company, and I are going to be starting this business mastermind, and it's going to be, um, an invitation only an intimate mastermind of business owners, um, around the Loudoun County area. And we're going to 
curate a selection of people who will work well together. And it's going to be kind of more of a, um, I guess, an intimate B&I kind of group. Yeah, love it. I, share. Yeah. We both get very intimidated with large groups of people and we don't like the people that are like, we don't want the rigor of a BNI. We want something yeah. like where we're having a tea party and that's yeah. what we want, <laughs> you know, maybe a maximum of 20 people. So yeah. when you're thinking of that, think about your ideal client again. Like when I thought of it, I thought of Charlotte, what would she like? She likes going to wineries and having high tea and the finer things in life. Yeah. And how can we do something around that? Oh my gosh, Chloe. Okay. So hold on. Is Charlotte a lot like you though? I think so. Yeah, Charlotte is me. Right, right. Charlotte is you. So, so ladies, this is what I want you to notice. Okay. Because as you're listening, first of all, Luckett's is a freak out, amazing place that even before you probably moved there, I don't know how long you were in Loudon, but it used to be the place to go for unique finds. Okay. Then the Washingtonian magazine suddenly declared it the best thing since sliced bread. And then all the prices quadrupled. So it's, but it's an up-leveled experience now too. So it's an amazing place. I miss it. I begged my husband to go and we just were there and I was ticked because the, the show, show house wasn't open. So anyhow, anyway, so it's an amazing place. If you like design and, and aesthetically beautiful things and unique things. So that's what that is. Um, but I want you to notice that Chloe purposefully puts her in places, herself in places that she enjoys, right? I mean, I used to love the flower and garden show in Leesburg, walking downtown. It was always like a neat place. And that's a perfect marriage of that and Luckett's. It's like everything makes sense. And you kept saying the word cohesive. So ladies, when you get things disjointed because you don't take time to sit back, all of a sudden your client experience becomes this overwhelming, daunting thing that you say, well, I'm going to put it off because I'm making my good money anyway, so I don't need it. And what, what I think Chloe is offering you is when you slow down and you curate your word, create a client experience that you're proud of, that you're proud to welcome people into the Chloe experience, to the Susie experience, whatever your name is, then it's a joy. It's not even work. Right. And then I love how you said we're having an intimate BNI kind of thing only without all the rules and having some fun. <laughs> Guess what? You said, I don't even like a lot of crowds. I didn't know that because I would think you'd love a hundred people, but you know what you said, Hey, to you and this other person, Virginia dare dress company said, how about we do 20 people and we'd be selective. Maybe they have to apply and then we get to decide. Right. And so ladies, do you see how Chloe is a leader? And you can be a leader. Chloe, it's just amazing. Any final words on, on putting together and mastering your client experience as we close out our, our conversation? I just think you have to be authentically you when you do this. Like, don't try and do something that someone else is doing. Like, you know, you've heard what I do, but you don't have to do what I'm doing. Um, be authentic to you. Do things that you love and make it super simple. Yes. Thank you, Chloe. Where can people find you? What's your handle on Instagram, which is so beautifully curated. <laughs> so on all social media, it's the Chloe Powell and you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. But you're not really busy, are you? You, you have lots of downtime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. I'm tired now. The social media has gone down a little bit. But... Yeah, yeah. No, but really, Chloe is um, a newlywed. Well, how long are you married now? Is it over a year? Yeah. Okay. I think it's two years in July. Two years in July. Oh, I love following your, your life. <laughs> but listen, ladies, you, I want you to smile like Chloe is smiling, right? This is available to you. So thank you so much, Chloe. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. You too, Jan. Thank you so much. Bye.